William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Someone once said that murder is a fine art. There's a catch, though. If you're a successful artist, they hang your paintings. If you're a successful murderer, they hang you. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. Even confidential investigators need a vacation. Sometimes they've been known to take one. The place I'd chosen was Vermont. The main reason for that was Jake. He was on vacation, too. He decided to come home and see if he'd been smart in abandoning Vermont to run an elevator on Madison Avenue. Say, Jake. Uh, Yeah? What's the verdict? Madison Avenue. Why? Is Madison Avenue dark and quiet like this? Nope. Is Madison Avenue surrounded by tall trees, cooled by gentle breezes? Filled with the fragrance of unspoiled nature? Nope. Now, what's Madison Avenue got that this place hasn't? Girls. Well, you may be right, but... Or you may be wrong. That came from directly up the road. Nice night for a hayride. Is it? Yep. Could have been a giggle. A rather loud giggle. Girls got very loud giggles sometimes, especially on a hayride. Oh, Jake, stop pulling my leg. Hey, wait a minute. What's that in the road up ahead of us? Hay wagon. I refuse to believe it, but it is filled with hay. Usually are. There's a horse out in front of it, but where's the driver? Say, Jake, would, would he have gone off and left the wagon out in the middle of the road? It ain't too likely. Oh. I'm coming up on that wagon. That girl, if it was a girl, didn't giggle. She screamed. I'd better take a look around in the hay. What for? Anything larger than a needle. Yeah, there's plenty of hay up here. Anything else? No, I... Mr. Craig? I was rushing things. There is something else up here. What? A man. A very pale man. What's he doing up there? Nothing. Just being dead. lay very still. His eyes stared up at the summer sky overhead, but saw neither the stars nor the moon. The moon that shone on him and on the metal handle of the knife that was buried in his heart. He was wearing overalls and a work shirt. His short hair outlined clearly the skull beneath. There was nothing I nor anyone could do for him. Murdered? Yes. Anything on him? No identification at all, Jake. We need a phone. Mm, Past the farmhouse, half mile back. Well, let's go. Think it's all right leaving him there? He won't mind. The Vermont night was as quiet and peaceful as it had been before I heard the scream and a man died of a knife wound lying on a mound of hay. Nature doesn't concern herself too much about us and our doings which is very bright of nature. Got to turn off the road to get to that farmhouse. Yeah. Well, somebody ought to oil that gate. Yeah. Old house is pretty run down. Jake, get down. It ain't necessary. Those shots. Over our heads. Her aim might improve. Her aim? Well, you can see her. Farmhouse window. This time, it's not the farmer with the shotgun. It's the farmer's daughter. Spoil a lot of stories that way. Hmm. She's left the window. Yeah. She knows she didn't hit either of us. Those shots were either a warning or possibly a yell for help. How are you going to decide? Well, if it was a warning, I don't think she'd have left the window. So it must be a call for help. Come on. That was real logical, Mr. Craig. Thanks. Let's hope it turns out to be true. There 
were no more shots, which did or didn't prove I'd been right, because the shooting would be better once we were inside the house. time I ever heard of targets knocking on the door. The lady may have had all the target shooting she wants. Who's there? Barry Craig and Jake. Hello? Barry Craig? Yeah. And Jake? Me. Neither of you look very terrifying. Is that bad? Well, no, it's nice. Please come in. Thanks. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Nice room. Rustic, perhaps, but I like it. Do you like being a farmer? Or, or maybe I should say... A farmer's uh, daughter. <laughs> Very much. Almost as much as you like firing guns at strangers? Oh, but I didn't know whether you were strangers or... Or what? Or dead men. <laughs> Maybe she was what she claimed to be, a farmer's daughter, but if she was, somebody's been telling me lies about farms. Her hairdo was sleek, as though it had been just applied. Her fingernails had had a lot of professional attention. Her dress was so simple, it practically yelled Paris at you. And she didn't need any of these beauty aids. She would have been beautiful without them, but not nearly so expensive. You did say dead men. Yes. You often run across dead men walking around? Yes. Uh-huh. You think I'm crazy, don't you? I don't think you're crazy at all. You've just got uh, a peculiar vision. I'm not sure I ought to be grateful for that. Oh, forget I said it. My name is Millie George. How do you do? This is, or was, my father's farm. He was very happy here until the dead men started walking. And then? He became one of them himself. Your father's dead? Over a year now. You live here alone? Oh, I don't really live here at all. I have an apartment and a job in town. But I come here often, as often as I dare. My fingers idly traced a pattern in the inch-deep dust on the table next to my chair. Inch-deep dust. Millie George was very lovely. She told her ghost story neatly, but she was also a complete liar. I think maybe we'd better skip the walking dead for a minute. There's something more urgent that's got to be done. Where's your phone? I'm afraid there isn't one. Father never cared for what he called mechanical murderers. Murderers? He meant things that killed time, interrupted work. I see. Destroyed quiet. I see. That's too bad. Why do you need a phone? Jake and I ran across a hay wagon some distance down the road. Oh? There was a man in it. He wasn't walking around like the people you've been telling us about. He was lying down, but he was dead anyway. If I'd been looking for a reaction to my words, I would have been disappointed. Lily George took the news with not a flicker of anything except polite interest. But I wasn't disappointed. I'd expected that reaction. The police like to be told about stray corpses. I suppose so. I think the gardeners have a phone. Where would I find them? Well, their house is about a quarter of a mile further down the road. Oh, good. Jake. Ready. Oh, uh, by the way, this man, what did he die of? A knife in his heart. Oh. Suicide? The angle of the knife's entrance wouldn't be right for suicide. Oh, then it was... Murder. How dreadful. Yes, terribly dreadful. So long. <laughs> As far as Millie George was concerned, murder belonged in pretty much the same category as a run in a pair of new nylons. You said how dreadful and bought another pair. You couldn't do exactly the same thing with a damaged life, though. Mr. Craig. Yeah? Millie George said the gardener's house, the one with the phone, was down the road that way. That's what she said, Jake. Then why are we going this way? I want to take another look at that hay wagon. Once wasn't enough? I think maybe there's been a change. Less hay? Less corpse. Mm -hmm. 
was a nice road to be taking a stroll on in the cool evening. It would have been an even nicer road if there hadn't been a hay wagon in the middle of it. Still there. Yeah. The horse must be getting lonely. Being a farmer, you get a wrong angle on horse. You don't think being a horse's chum is romantic. I'll never say hello to a horse again. Excuse me. Oh. Mm. You get in pretty spry at climbing hay wagons, Mr. Craig. Just practice, that's all. Mr. Craig? Hmm? Counting the hay up there? No, just confirming a guess. Less corpse? No corpse. I'd thought back at Millie George's house that the shots might have been a warning or maybe a call for help. I knew now they'd been neither. What they actually had been were distractions. Mr. Craig, maybe... Maybe he wasn't really dead. Jake, they don't get any deader. Ain't likely you'd be fooled. Somebody moved him out of there. Yeah. Well, what for? Can't be many folks enjoy dragging corpses around. Whoever dragged this one maybe didn't enjoy it at all. Well, what was he trying to do? Save undertaker's expenses? Maybe he was trying to save his neck. I got down out of the hay wagon and said goodbye to it. We wouldn't be coming back that way. Mr. Craig. What is it, Jake? Funny thing about city people... They like to walk. Oh? They do it deliberate, even when they don't have to. Well, uh... Country people hate to walk. But, Jake, uh, we've got to get back to that farmhouse. With the girl in it? Yeah, Millie George. We're hoping that this time maybe she won't shoot over our heads. We're hoping that this time she won't shoot at us at all. And for this, we're wearing our feet down clear at the ankle. Oh, it's not as bad as that. It's worse. I got short ankles. Oh, Mr. Craig, I can tell you right now, she don't have a phone. I know, but by this time, she may have something else. Do I want to know what it might be? Not in your condition, you don't. Thanks. We didn't have much farther to go, which was just as well. Jake had started groaning at every step. Next to Jake's snores, Jake's groans are the surest recipe for punctured eardrums. Oh, you can stop groaning, Jake. Uh, We're at the house. Oh, dear, if I got strength enough to lift my head. I, uh, at the house. Think you can make it inside? Oh, dear, I can try. Fine. Jake. I, uh... It doesn't look as if anyone's going to invite us in. This don't make me feel bad. We'll go in without an invitation. Now I don't know how I feel. Find out later. Well, somebody left the lights on. Wasn't a Vermont man. Quiet. Yeah, let's try the parlor. Oh, anything for an excuse to keep a walk in. I suppose this is the parlor. Nobody in here. It's the parlor. Hmm. I don't like this much. The only thing left for us to do now is uh, sit out. Excuse me while I cheer. I... Well, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, Grandpa. Cheer. Company. So I notice. Kind of thing you're liable to run into in old houses. They come out of the woodwork, I think. Uh, uh, don't try to insult me, mister. Why not? Anything you're liable to say is liable to be true. Don't be foolish. I don't use that kind of language. You also ain't using the kind of language I would like to hear. What language would that be? The one telling me where the baby is buried? A boy or a girl, baby? Jake. Oh, that grandpa's a joker. Grandpa could easy get his head knocked off. Put the gun down, son, and grandpa will be glad to tangle with you. I ain't putting no guns down. And when I say baby, you know what I mean. You mean uh, something worth money? Oh, you are a bright one. Okay, so where is it? Even if I knew where it was, I wouldn't tell you. Why not? You've got the wrong R.H. factor. Wrong? Uh, well, uh, supposing I could get a hold of the right one. 
It wouldn't buy you the time of the day from me. Uh, language like that's gotten guys killed before this, mister. So have guns like that. Well, this is kind of fancy, but it ain't very productive. What makes you think I know anything about the, the, uh, the baby? You're in this dump, ain't you? I'm in it. So what are you doing here? Looking for a beer? It so happens I'm looking for a corpse. Well, you're going to find one. Your own. Only ain't going to be no condition to appreciate it. Funny thing, you didn't show any interest in the corpse I'm looking for. Whose it might be, say? Hey, Mr. Corpses is dead. They don't bother me. It's the live operators you got to keep in mind. Like you and Grandpa. How about the girl? You just leave her out of this. She's for me. Oh? And why do you think I was called in? Hey, 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 wait, mister. You trying to tell me you was called in by... By the girl, yes. That don't smell so good. Neither do you. Let's call it a draw and go home. You were saying the girl brought you in, huh? Okay. We find out fast. Hey, sugar! Come here, sugar. This joker informs me you brought him in on a deal. That's so? No. I had a long look at the girl who'd come into the room. It was fun while it lasted. She was worth looking at. She was beautiful, non-rural, undoubtedly expensive, and she was not Millie George. Well? Call it mistaken identity. Oh. <laughs> oh, cut it out, Dina. I don't know what you think he said, but it wasn't very funny. It wasn't? It wasn't. Oh. This girl probably is on your side. She's not the one I was talking about. You, you mean there's been another babe around? Oh, honey, he must mean Joey's wife. Uh, why don't you forget you ever learned to talk, Dina? That ain't a friendly attitude. I ain't feeling friendly. <laughs> Joey makes it out of the pen, ducks for cover here, and a counter here is where he buried the baby. Banks wouldn't uh, like you calling their money baby. Well, I don't like banks. So it was bank money. Thanks for telling me. Who told you? Uh, never mind. To resume, Joey gets here, and the first thing anybody knows, he winds up with a knife and a ticker. This is bad. It ain't good. Shut up. You can't say that to a Vermont man. Why not? I don't rightly remember. Well, get in touch with me when you do. What sale? Now, will you lay off? You guys trying to confuse me or something? Uh, Joey winds up with a knife and a ticker and no dough. Look, ain't you forgetting Joey's wife? Hey, yeah. If she was around here, maybe she met him even before we got here, grabbed the dough off of him, and then handed him a knife, huh? Fine wife. Nah, she never liked him so much. After she found out he was a bank operator. She was prejudiced against banks? She was prejudiced in favor of banks. A narrow-minded woman. So, I'm thinking maybe she's the one we got to get our hands on. Now, when did you see her? A little while ago. Where? Here. Well, she ain't in the house. We went all through it. If she knifed Joey and scrambled a dough, we better get after her. Brady's a scream, ain't he? Yeah, <laughs> uh, don't disturb my mental processes, huh? Now, uh, there wasn't no car around before which means she must have headed for the village and railroad station. Okay, now we know where we're going. Oh, I think we do. And that reminds me. What about you guys? Well, we'll hang around and play some pinochle. I've been wanting a good pinochle game. Uh, Dina, what do you think? I think you're a big dope. Oh, what kind of remark is that? Oh, you believe too easy. Joey's wife would maybe stick up Joey, but she wouldn't take the bank's money. Yeah, it could be right. Yeah, but maybe... These characters, you ought to... Don't pay any attention to her, Brady. She's a bitter woman. Just shut up. You know what I say? I say get rid of them, and then we'll have lots of time to find the money. Hey, you could be right. She could also be wrong. All right, so she's wrong. What do I lose if she's wrong? Mr. Craig's life and mine. In my line of business, I can't afford to be sentimental. If you die for nothing, I shall be sorry. But not very sorry and not for very long. Okay, here. Please, Brady. Huh? Not while a lady's in the room. Oh. oh, excuse me, Dina. Sometimes I think you ain't got no manners. I said excuse me. There's a nice, refined girl. You know, never even packs a rod. Well, Brady. Yeah? You're an idiot. 
Well, that could be. You but... think Dean is really going to wait for you in that car outside? Well, sure. Me and her is personally very friendly. That was before the bank money came up. Why shouldn't she wait for me? And share your execution? Who's getting executed? I knock you guys off, we find a dough, we get out of here. Nobody knows who's even around. Dina gets out of here, you mean? You don't. The cops will pick you up in a few hours. Hey, you keep saying she won't wait for That's me. That's what I keep saying, because it's the truth. Would you like to test her before sticking your neck away out? What kind of test? Fire two shots into the floor. What for? I got nothing against the floor. Oh, forgive me. You haven't got brains enough to be an idiot. Fire these shots, and it'll sound to Dina as though you shot Jake and me. Then if she waits for you, fine. You can go ahead with your original plan. But if she doesn't wait, if she scrams as soon as she hears those shots... Hey, it's an idea. You know, it's even a good idea. Okay, boys, just don't get alarmed. Hey, you shouldn't have insulted Dina. She's okay. So just for insulting her, I'll kill you anyway. Shut up. Listening, Brady? Hey, Dina! Hey, Dina! Uh, a man betrayed. Craig. Craig, you was right. I feel terrible. You should. But I don't understand Dina crossing me like that. What'd she get out of it? How much money was in the bank job? Hey, uh, around 30 grand. She gets 30 grand out of it. Huh? But she... Were you and she together all evening? Well, no, but... You came down to this house? Why? Well, we figured this is where Joey's going to head once we hear he has departed from the pen. But Joey don't show. Then you tell me Joey is now a corpse. Pretty plain what happened. One way or another, Joey latched onto a pair of overalls and a work shirt, plus one wagon filled with hay. He dug up the money from wherever he'd hidden it and headed for this house. But before he got here... He runs into trouble. He ran into Dina. Now it begins to clear up. And Dina takes him for the dough, huh? She takes him. Uh, I could have figured it out for myself. Yeah, all you needed was Mr. Craig's brains. Better he should have them. What would I do with them? You've got a point. And so is your head. <laughs> Please, Grandpa... Uh, uh, Dina does not wish to share this here dough with me, so she tries to get me to knock you guys off, and then get picked up by the cops while she's traveling very fast in my car. Hey, this is revolting. It is. You know, you do very good guessing. No guessing. No? How do you know Joey was an escape con? I mentioned the fact that he was pale and that his hair had been cut short. That was enough. Farmers don't work indoors in the summer. They couldn't be pale. And why did Joey dress up like a farmer? Because he wasn't one. Escaped convicts are pale, have short hair, and seek a disguise. Uh, you know something, Craig? You're so smart, I'm beginning to worry. What about? Well, what kind of securities us criminals going to have if private eyes like you go around being smart all the time? The same kind of security you've always had. No security. Well, uh, just don't dwell on that there. I got something else to worry about. I gotta figure out a way to get a hold of Dina before she scrams out of the country with that dough. But Brady, huh? Dina doesn't have the money. Brady had a little trouble with this. Even Jake began to look worried. As far as I was concerned, I hoped. Because I could turn out to be wrong, and being wrong in a case of this kind was only one short step before being dead. But you figured it all out yourself. Logically. That Dina was the one who knocked off Joey and took the dough. What you're forgetting, Brady, is that there can be more than one logical explanation for anything. Eh, uh, huh? He means just because something's logical don't prove it's true. Oh. And then, of course, logic can be twisted. As twisted as your mind, Brady. Ah, uh, you leave my mind out of this. It's got its own troubles. Uh, please explain. Well, Joey was a desperate man running from the police. He was also a man owning $30,000. He was finally a man in a hurry. So? How would Dina have persuaded a man in those circumstances to let her get close enough to him to stab him? Well, uh, maybe... There's no way. Well, somebody got close enough to of him. Of course. Somebody who was armed with a weapon that was dangerous at a distance. A gun, say. 
Oh, so Dina... No, no. You yourself told us Dina never carried a gun. Joey's wife... Wouldn't have needed to take the chance of killing him on the road. She could have waited till she had him here. You know something? I said you were so bright I was beginning to get worried. I ain't beginning no more. I'm worried. So you admit you were the one who stabbed Joey and took the money? Yeah, sure. Dina scrammed just now because she was afraid you didn't intend to share the money with her. But instead would kill her the same way you'd kill Joey. Could be. She realized you'd hidden Joey's body to gain time for doing just that. It won't do her much good. I know where she goes when she's scared. But before that... You can't shoot us. Why? Well, I don't know, frankly, but give me a little time and I'll think of something. Uh, too bad, Grandpa. I ain't giving you no time at all. Oh. oh, for a fellow who's just been shot, I feel fine. You weren't shot, Jake. Come on in, Miss Millie. I spotted her behind those drapes a long time ago. I was looking for her. The trouble with you, Jake, is that you spent so much time thinking about the farmer, you forgot about the farmer's daughter. It didn't quite end there, though. The police removed the debris, put out a pickup for Dina, and then... Barry. Yeah? I really am a farmer's daughter. I know. So? Yeah? How about some country cooked ham? Hmm. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. Tonight's story, Hay is for Homicide, was written by Louis Vitties. Next week, it's the strange story of Ghosts Don't Die in Bed, about which Barry Craig has this to say. We call next week's story, Ghosts Don't Die in Bed, which is a true saying. It's also true, of course, that they don't die anywhere else, because they're already dead. All except for one I run into when... Uh, when? Good night, folks. See you next week. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you transcribed an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Directed by Arthur Jacobson. Also heard, Parley Bear, Joyce McCluskey, Jack Moyles, and Vivi Janis. John Lang speaking. The aviation age of America is now in progress and calls to young Americans to keep in step by becoming members of the United States Air Force. If you are a high school or college graduate between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single and in good physical condition, then you may be eligible to win your wings as an Air Force lieutenant. While in training, you'll learn to fly as pilots with the latest equipment and the best instructors. Investigate now. Visit your Air Force recruiting station for additional information. There's another exciting dragnet adventure tonight on most NBC radio stations.